Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Small Engine Velocity. And today we will be doing a maintenance video for the Venom X18R 200cc automatic street bike. Uh, this is a bike that I've done recently. I'll have some videos. Is it here or here? No, it's here. Yeah, I'll put some videos up here. Uh, in regards to the unboxing of this bike and then some overview of features just in case you were wondering what bike this is. Uh, it is kind of a Grom size automatic and uh, it seems to appeal to a lot of people because there's a lot of people out there who want to kind of try start to start biking but don't know how to do a standard yet so they want to try with an automatic and this seems to be a bike that fits within that category. I'm probably going to do several videos on maintenance on this bike so that uh, for those of you out there who have this can have some support on how to use this bike, how to maintain it, and how to make sure that it stays running well. Uh, if this is something that you'd like to keep track of, do me a favor and go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click on that bell so that you can be notified of future videos. Anyways, before we get started, let's go ahead and roll that intro. Alright, so let's go over some of the tools that you're going to need for this uh, adventure, I suppose. <laughs> uh, this bike's motor is based off of a GY6, so if you have a GY6 engine, this is going to be incredibly similar to what we're looking at today. So this also can cross over to those types of motors, but a lot of the little hints that I'll be giving will be specific towards this X18R bike from Venom. So the first thing you're going to need is a 17 millimeter socket. Uh, it doesn't need to be a deep socket. It could just be a regular socket. Uh, you're also going to need a, a ratchet uh, that will fit that socket. Uh, and you're also going to need an eight millimeter socket specifically for this bike. And I'll show you in the video later on why you need that eight millimeter socket for. For those two sockets, you're gonna probably need a quarter inch and a three eight inch, whatever sock, whatever ratchet that fits into that socket that you chose. You might need an extension so that you can get that drain plug. Uh, it's a little bit close to the bike, so you might need to push it out a little bit so you can get some leverage on it without actually stripping anything. Uh, you might also wanna take out a 17 millimeter wrench and an eight millimeter wrench, just in case it might be a little bit too tight. You need to use it to break something free, or maybe you don't have sockets right now and all you have is wrenches. Uh, these should suffice. This is not necessary. This is something of my preference. I like to have a pair of gloves on because I don't like getting oil under my fingernails and all over the place and it kind of looks gross and you have to scrub it off at the end of the day. Uh, and then also you can have a bunch of rags, uh, use rags. Uh, sometimes I've used old baby socks and baby blankets for kids who've grown up already and they're just kind of sitting around the house. And other times I've also used uh, single pairs of socks. You know how the dryer eats socks and then there's always one sock of pretty much every sock that you've ever seen. I keep those in a bag and then once I can't find the sock after a while, I go ahead and use those for the garage, uh, for oil changes and cleaning things up because I wanna give them a second life. You're also gonna want to use a 10W40 oil that is 4T or designed for a motorcycle. Uh, what I have here is what I used on my Honda CBR and my C SV650. Uh, I had extra bottles, so I'm using it, but you can use mobile 10W40 on your bike, would be perfectly fine. If you're gonna pick up some oil, you might as well pick up a few of them, uh, and I'll tell you a reason why later. You're also gonna need a funnel, obviously, so that you can pour the oil into the fill port on the bike, and you're also going to need a container to put that oil in. Uh, I had to buy a new funnel, this blue one that you see in the video. It's funny because I've been using the same funnel forever and I finally lost it. And I finally wanna make a video using it and I don't have it anymore. So I'm probably gonna put this one away and maybe the next day the oil uh, funnel will show up somewhere for me to use, which seems to always be the case. So the first thing you need to do is locate the drain plug. The drain plug is going to be on the rider side left when you're sitting on the seat to the left side. It's going to be underneath the kickstart, almost directly below it and you'll see a little gold plate and then underneath that you'll see the drain plug. The drain plug is going to be 17 millimeter but if you look there's this plate that's in the way that has two eight millimeter bolts and you need to take that out of the way to get to that bolt more efficiently. You can still technically get to it but it's a little bit crooked 
and I don't want you to strip the end of that bolt. So it would be easier just to take that off and make sure that, that you're able to access the drain plug fully. Part of the reason I want to take the gold plate away is because I want to use an impact on taking off this bolt. It, it's just easier in the way I like to do it. Go ahead and locate the fill side, which is going to be on the other side of the bike. It'll be on the rider right side of the bike, right by the exhaust, pretty close to where the exhaust pipe meets the muffler. You should see a little plastic plug with a flat side so you could twist it with your hand and take it off easily. When you take that off, you'll also notice that inside of there is the dipstick. Uh, and we'll use that later on to, to measure the amount of oil when we're refilling oil back into the bike. In my process, the first thing we're gonna do is gonna go ahead and get the eight millimeter socket or the eight millimeter wrench and take off that gold plate. That gold plate, like I said before, is blocking the fill port, or excuse me, the drain port or the plug on the bottom of the bike on the CVT. It's pretty easy to take off. It might be a little bit tight if it's the first time you've taken it off. Uh, just make note that the right bolt and the left bolt are going to be different sizes. You're, the right one will be longer than the left one. Make sure you know which one is which. So when you're putting it back together, there's no confusion whenever you're putting it back together again, thinking, wow, it doesn't fit right, or maybe the bolt isn't fitting and it's not grabbing threads. It's because you have it backwards. Now that that's out of the way, you should be able to see the drain plug much easier. Even with the camera view, you can tell that it's much more accessible. You'll notice that the drain plug is facing sideways outside of there. So uh, imagine that there's going to be a lot of oil in there. So when you take that off, it's going to come out at an arc whenever you do that because of the pressure of all the fu fuel, of all the oil above it. So be sure to position your pan appropriately underneath it. Now, a little trick. Whenever you're taking the drain plug off and you break it with the wrench, hand tighten or hand loosen the rest of it. And as you're taking it off, be sure to put pressure pushing into the hole so that when the threads come free, it, the plug is still in the hole so that you can move it away without having to drop the drain plug into the oil. I would recommend just letting it sit there for as long as you feel like it to let the rest of the oil drain out. Notice that my oil is pretty clear and pretty golden looking still. I've only got about three or four miles on here, but there's a reason why I like to do this. And I'll kind of give you an example if I find anything later on as to what and why I like to do it this way. Once the majority of the oil has come out of the bike, then go to the other side and we'll go to the screen or it's not the filter, it's the screen plug. And what this does is instead of a filter, there's just a screen sorting out larger objects that might be floating around in your oil that need to be filled, uh, that need to be filtered. Not quite a filter, but better than if you just let oil run freely through there just in case something might uh, break loose inside of there. This will need the 17 millimeter socket. Uh, you can't get the impact under there, so you're gonna have to use either the wrench or the socket and be sure to remember righty tighty lefty loosey. When you're looking underneath there, um, you might get a little bit discombobulated as which way it is. So be sure that you turn it in the right direction so you don't start over tightening and stripping threads. Uh, remember when you're taking this off, there's tension underneath there. There's a spring that holds the filter in place against the cap. So as the threads come out, after it comes all the way out, it will push out. So be ready for that. Now, after I take all this away, you'll also notice that I forgot to take the filter out, but there's also a, a filter that's inside of there that you need to take out and inspect. So this is what you wanna do after you do each oil change or every time you check the filter. Uh, you wanna take all the parts out, lay them out and take a good look at it. You'll wanna look at the drain plug and make sure that there's a washer there. That washer is usually aluminum or copper and it's malleable and smushy and normally when you tighten it, it's supposed to kind of squish a little bit, form against the surfaces and give you a better seal. Make sure that's, that, that's there. If it's not there, then go get a crush washer from your local hardware store. Next, you'll see uh, a spring that holds the filter in place. This is what puts tension on the spring and it kind of gives it a, it kind of looks like a thimble for those of you who know what a thimble is anymore. Um, seems like no one knows what sewing supplies is anymore. <laughs> But you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna check that filter. And this is one of the reasons why I like to check the filter uh, as soon as I buy a, a China bike. You know, the casting process and everything might have a little bit of 
of slag or something on the inside so the filter might catch that. I don't know if you noticed when I was taking the spring out earlier something was on the filter or no something was on the spring and that also landed inside the cap. So here's what I found inside of the top when, when you take out the oil that was still on the bottom cover you'll notice that there was a couple of metal things in there that were floating and, and I don't know what these are what they came from and it's good that the filter caught them but there may be other things inside of there that's why I like to change it right away uh, and catch and remove anything like that more than likely what I'm going to do again is I'm going to go ahead and change the oil again at 100 miles uh, just to make sure that I get any of those impurities or floaters that might be inside of my motor so now you're done with that and we did all the inspection and everything we need to do to take a look at what's inside of the engine and you're familiar with how the the the, the screen system works in this motor uh, it's time to go ahead and put everything back together uh, the first thing we're going to do is do the the screen uh, when you put the screen back into the motor uh, there's the cap and then you put the spring on top of it make sure that the tapered part is facing down into the cap and then the screen of course goes into the motor and then the spring holds the filter in place. Now you're going to have to do a little bit of effort to push the spring down and then get it to thread. Once you get that thread started, then you won't have to hold the spring anymore. Now, keep in mind, when you're tightening this, this cover, if it has a, a lot of torque to it, please stop, take it back off, and try to put the cap back on again. You may have cross-threaded it and I don't want you to ruin the threads on the side of there because once those threads are ruined, there's a lot, there's not much you can do to repair that. So be sure to put it in and then it turns nicely with hand twists. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is just put this hand tight. Uh, don't over torque it, don't go crazy. Maybe about two ooga oogas and, and you should be good, but give it a good enough tightening so that seal and that little spring is, is holding that uh, filter in place. Then you're gonna wanna go to the other side and put the fill plug in. You have to put the fill plug in first. Uh, when you put the fill plug in, make sure that the washer is in there like it was when you took it off, the crush washer that helps with the seal. Put that in there. This is the 17 millimeter wrench of the socket and, and put it in place and, and give it a good tightening. Uh, don't over tighten it. Uh, I've never actually used a torque wrench on using this. Uh, so I've done it by feel, but it's, I've done it so many times, but just tighten it down to the point where you feel like it's not gonna come off anymore. And it's, it's got a good grip on there. Once you're done with that, then the next step is to put that gold bracket cover thing. I'm not 100% sure what it's there for. It looks like it's a protection thing. So uh, put that in there. And remember that the short bolt is on the left and the long bolt is on the right. This doesn't have to be super tight because really all this is doing is holding the CVT cover on. And there's a bazillion other bolts on there, but just, just put it hand tight on there. Uh, so that it's comfortable. Remember that all of this is made of cast aluminum, so just remember to be careful not to strip anything because it's it's really hard to fix anything that's stripped on a cast block of a motor of this kind. All right, so you go to the other side of the bike, locate where the fill port is, take off the cap, and uh, look at the, 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 the little dipstick on there, be familiar with that. There's little X's and a hash mark area where it's acceptable. Uh, put that aside, and what I recommend, since the oil fill port is right next to the the exhaust you don't want to get oil on the exhaust and have it burn off and feel embarrassed as you're riding it around whenever smoke is coming off your bike uh, wrap it up with some rags or something like that uh, as long as it's cold wrap it up with some rags and stuff like that so that uh, you can prevent as you know if there's a spill or something you're not gonna get it all over uh, the exhaust and have to burn that off later on what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the funnel in uh, put it in there comfortably and use about three quarters of a bottle of the oil that you've chosen to put inside of this motor. Uh, once you get three quarters of the bottle in, go ahead, take the funnel out carefully, put the cap on, tighten, uh, actually clean the dipstick off and then put the cap back on, turn it and then get it hand tight, loosen it, take it off and take a look at the dipstick to make sure if you see any oil touching it. If it's not touching it yet, then fill it with a little bit more and then put the dipstick in and just keep doing that and over and over again until you're about halfway up the dipstick, maybe a little bit higher. Just don't fill it all the way up. It's not necessary to fill it all the way up. So after that, clean up your mess, throw everything away. Be sure to dispose of your oil responsibly, pour it back into the original container or uh, bring it back, uh, pour it into something and take it over to AutoZone. AutoZone takes oil back for free. 
uh, and then gives you your container back. So if you have a big jug, you can put it in there and then take it over every once in a while. Uh, but like I want to remind everybody, after you do this oil change, make sure you have a couple other ones handy. Do another oil change at maybe 100 or 200 miles. Uh, try to get three oil changes in before you hit 1,000 miles just to make sure that everything is cleaned out on the motor. Uh, that may seem a little bit excessive, but uh, from my experience, um, if you have a China bike like this, there's not a shop that you can go to or a dealership that you can go to to get maintenance done or warranty work done. So you're going to have to make sure that you make sure that it's that it runs as best as it can for as long as it can. All right. Be sure to subscribe if you want to watch more videos on this bike. I've got several more coming out uh, being produced right now. If you want to see other things about small bore engines or anything motorcycle related at all, please do me a favor and give us a follow. Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Venom X18R 200cc automatic street bike. This is a, why does I keep? Let's try it. Here we go. Hey everybody, this is Caesar with Small Engine Velocity. Why did my light turn off? Let me try walking in. Hey everybody. No, I don't like it. <laughs>